God damn it. I haven't made a video in over two weeks. I should probably do part two of the Golden Compass. What the hell? What's going on? Ugh, damn it, this sucks. What? Well, that was a complete waste of time. Hello? Oh, right. I'm you, from the future. We have to review Doctor Who. Ah, shit. What do you mean we have to review Doctor Who? I mean, we have to review Doctor Who. But it has like a million episodes. Obviously we're not going to do the whole thing, just an analysis of the current trends, themes, and issues. Well, I suppose that's more manageable. But why now? Well, Series 10 starts soon. And remember what happened in the Christmas episode? Oh yeah, I tried to forget about that. Well, you can't. That scene was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Well, let's get started then. Oh, time travel. If ever there was a worse plot device, I hope never to encounter it. Of course, there are plenty of stories about time travel that actually work. There's just something so interesting about stories that warp our concept and perception of time. But with very little exception, these stories are compact. They're not TV shows that have been running for 50 years. From Back to the Future to Steins Gate, these shows embrace the impossibility of time travel and let the plot follow what is possible in the world and scenario given. This sometimes results in part of the story being rewritten by the effects of time travel such as a paradox. That's okay though, as these stories have a defined start and end with a constant narrative theme. Doctor Who, on the other hand, has a tendency to let the plot dictate what's possible, and so ends up breaking its own continuity more times than I think it's reasonable for a show of 820 episodes. But if rewriting some of your story is okay for some shows, why not Doctor Who? Simply put, Doctor Who is episodic, meaning it's quite different from other shows about time travel. Though whether you love or hate Doctor Who, you have to respect its longevity. After more than half a century, it's still going, thanks mostly to the perfect writer's get out of jail free card. Regeneration. 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 If a Time Lord dies, they can change their entire body and live life once more. It's a handy way to stay alive, and an even handier way to keep the show alive. Couple this with the whole adventures in time and space, and you have an almost unparalleled opportunity for variety. Doctor Who can literally be anything at once, from a western to a horror, from a comedy to a tragedy. It can change its time period, location, genre, and character. Not all shows can say they have the same amount of freedom. Of course, none of this would be possible if the show wasn't episodic. Why? Because continuous stories nearly always demand a constant narrative theme and tone. But since it's split up into episodes, the show can really take advantage of the changing tone. And for many, it doesn't matter if Doctor Who makes the odd mistake. Or a hundred. They're in it for the journey. For the swash and buckle. And I really do mean this when I say, I totally get it. But for many years now, my patience has been wearing thin with our dear old Doctor. But the final straw came to me like one lovely little Christmas present. Hey, future me. What, well, yeah? How do you use that whole time travel thing? How did you get here? Oh, it's uh, pretty simple. Why, thank you for explaining that in such a logical and open way. You're welcome. Oh, shut up. <laughs> got a cold there, Grant? I always get a cold at Christmas. Me too. What an invasion. Where did you get that from? My pocket. How do you keep a glass of water in your pocket? Skills. Now, hush. I've got a lot of work to do. God, that was terrible. You're telling us. What the? <laughs> hey, what the hell, man? He saw us. It's fine. He won't remember. How do you know? Do you remember seeing two future versions of yourself on Christmas Day? Yeah, that's what I thought. Now come on, let's get moving. So, what do you have to say about that then? Well, it sort of totally sucked. Yes, and... And what? That's it. 
It was a terrible episode, filled as usual with wasted ideas and boring... well, everything. Oh, come on, Loxley. You'll never be any good if you don't actually expand on your... opinion. <sighs> fine, fine. Where should I start? They say you should begin at the beginning. Very well. Doctor Who first aired in 1960. Not what I meant! Doctor Who is described by many, including itself, as a story about a madman in a box. I am definitely a madman with a box. Quite an apt description, really. And for many, it was a simple yet clever show about wacky adventures through time and space. But notice that key word, through. You see, Doctor Who has never really been that good at the whole time travel thing. How could it? It's got so many episodes. Time travel is hard, and it's basically the narrative form of a minefield. One misstep and your entire story falls apart. And if you'd like to imagine it exploding so my analogy makes sense, then please do so. While there are overarching plots for each season, most episodes of Doctor Who happen independently of each other, sometimes with unknown lengths of time between each one. They're simply a snapshot of the life of the Doctor and their assistant. And that's great! If Doctor Who had a more continuous story, as I said, we'd have a whole host of other problems. Throw in a few paradoxes, and your whole show dissolves into nothingness. Doctor Who's strength was travelling through time and space, to some far off planet and or distant age. Then they'd have an adventure. Brilliant! Fantastic! Fantastic! But it seems that lately there's been a shift in the ethos of the show. It appears to be less and less about having fun in a wacky situation and possibly saving a planet or two, but about telling jokes. How do you keep a glass of water in your pocket? Skills! So the doctor can hold a cup of water in his pocket because... Skills. The writers are clearly more interested in telling jokes than conveying anything that could be described as plot. You don't need to know how the water's in there, because it's funny. Get it? Of course, there's nothing wrong with having jokes in your story. Comedy is a wonderful medium that is often highly underappreciated in society in general. Comedy mustn't overpower the story you're trying to tell. When you structure it like this, putting jokes ahead of story, you miss out what comedy can truly be, a storytelling device. One of the worst current trends in Hollywood is the, what I like to call, everyone loves a funny man. Everyone is super witty and can fire off one-liners like, like. You think you've got problems? We've got, got share bed. bed. Every day is a struggle. Since 99% of people probably think I'm crazy and have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll simply say this. When you're trying to tell a joke, don't stop the flow of the narrative for five minutes so you can all sit around and be quippy together. The Christmas episode of Doctor Who was a complete mess from start to finish, besides the nausea-inducing jokes. But to me, this scene so perfectly illustrated the main reason for my distaste for Doctor Who recently, I felt I had to do something about it. So I made a video on YouTube. This will really have a massive effect on things. This is to say nothing about the numerous plot lines that go absolutely nowhere, or the distressingly limited personalities of the show's female cast. We have one more season with our dear old Capaldi, and I really do hope the show manages to turn things around. Capaldi had the potential to be one of the best doctors we've ever had. He's just not been given good enough scripts. Skills, now, hush, I've got a lot of work to do. You see, it's not actually the scene itself that's the problem. Rather, it's a perfect example of the biggest flaw of all. Almost every problem I have with the show can be traced back to a lack of vision. The writers just don't know what they want the story to be, nor do they know what they want the Doctor to be either. Doctor Who is a strange show, isn't it? For all its flaws, and they are numerous, even when the jokes get in the way, even when the plot falls to pieces, I'm not sure I can ever really hate it. After every season I say, that's it, I'm done with Doctor Who. But no matter what happens, I always go back for the next week. Maybe it's just my guilty pleasure, but I really believe this show has greatness in it. When we get to see the Doctor's human side, when we see what he's gone through and what he's lost, it can be very powerful. But whatever happens, after this series, there will be a complete change again. It's a shame though. Capaldi has had two out of his three seasons, and there's not that much to show for it. True. Heaven Sent was a good episode though. Oh yeah, that was amazing! <laughs> yeah. Hey, so how far in the future are you? About two seconds. What? Right, well, that takes care of that.
Time travel is dumb. 